It's a pleasure to present to you today uh, our ashram rare earth element and fluorospar deposit in Quebec, Canada. Uh, in terms of rare earth elements, uh, let me, there we go. Everyone needs rare earth elements. Whether you're red or you're blue, it's the green wave that's washing over you. Whether you're Greta Thunberg or Vin Diesel, whether you're driving an electric assist bike or driving a Dodge Charger, you need rare earth elements. To be clear, the majority of value for rare earth elements is in the magnet feeds, but the largest market currently for rare earth elements are both in the service of the internal combustion engine, which would be cerium for catalytic converters and lanthanum to process oil into gasoline. In terms of what is arguably the best independent report on rare earth elements, that comes from a great guy named Ryan Castillo in Sudbury, Ontario, and that is under the name of Adamus Intelligence, and this comes directly from him. Not only do rare earths used in magnets make up the lion's share of global value today, but in the years ahead, demand for these four rare earth elements is expected to grow faster than demand for all other rare earth elements, challenging the ability of the supply side to keep up. Going forward, we project that demand will substantially exceed global production, leading to the depletion of historically accumulated inventories and shortages of these critical rare earths if significant additional sources of supply are not developed. I would recommend getting this report if you're interested. In terms of the bogeyman factor, China is just not as dominant as it once was. China became a net importer of rare earth elements two years ago. China currently buys from Myanmar, Vietnam, Australia, North Korea, and the United States. And they have made significant investments into potential new producers globally. In terms of COVID-19, there have been two effects specifically. One, very, very significant increase in the anxiety of manufacturers globally about being dependent upon sources coming from China. Second, what some analysts have called the stay at home index, there's been a significant increase in the purchases of home electronics and hardware that are electric and that need rare earth elements. In terms of rare earth element misinformation versus facts, is rare earth element extraction and processing harmful to the environment? No not intrinsically, it's not any more harmful than any other commodity, but historically the Chinese production was extremely harmful, but Western regulations do not allow for that kind of extraction or processing. And even China has set, shut down projects recently and added costs to reduce environmental impacts. Second, is it true that rare earth element deposits are called rare because they are not often found in economic concentrations? This is true, but it's a bit misleading. It's not about tonnage and grade, it's about mineralogy, which is the difference between, between being economic or being a complete waste of money. Ask Robert Friedland what he would rather have in terms of a nickel deposit, a massive sulfide or a laterite. This brings us to the square peg, square peg round hole situation, monocyte, bastinocyte, xenotime. These are the dominant rare earth element minerals currently, and these haven't changed. Over 1 billion US has been spent approximately on projects with problematic mineralogy. Whereas the ashram is the most advanced rare earth element project in North America to compare favorably to the dominant Chinese producers. If you remember only one thing out of this presentation, I would encourage you to remember this slide, mineralogy and geology fundamentals. One, there are over 150 rare earth minerals, but only four have been commercialized. Number two, only monocyte, bastinocyte, and xenotime are amenable to producing high grade mineral concentrates. Three, the host rock type for over 80% of global production is carbonatite. And the ashram de deposit has all of these traits along with a demonstrated ability to produce high grade mineral concentrates at high recoveries. This is a list of the largest current producers on planet earth. And if you look at the fourth column from the left, carbonatite, 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 and then the ashram, carbonatite. Now the one at the very top actually is Linus and they are a subset of a carbonatite called a laterite. And they're, they were able to solve their issues. Let me just say that. That brings us to though, the ashram, the best rare earth element deposit that is not yet in production. 
The ashram is located in Nunavik, which is the northern third thereabouts of Quebec. And Nunavik is under what is called the James Bay Northern Quebec Agreement, which is the most streamlined piece of legislation for the development and permitting of a mining project in Canada, if not North America. In terms of our resource, you will see that we have 1.6 million tons measured, 27.7 million tons indicated, 219.8 million tons in the inferred category at approximately 1.8%. This puts us as over 30 times the grade of certain other projects in North America and over 100 times the size of certain other projects in North America. And this resource, which amounts to currently 249 million tons at just under 2%, doesn't include the 10,000 meters of drilling we've done in the last eight years. In terms of our ability to produce high grade mineral concentrates, you can see us here on this, on this chart with uh, the world producers. And you can also see that we can produce a mineral concentrate slightly higher grade than Linus can. In terms of the magnet feed, and if you remember the Adamus report, the, the greatest amount of value in rare earth elements is in the magnet feed. And in terms of that, we have the, one of the world's highest distributions of these four rare earth elements. We're about a percentage point higher grade than Linus, and we're almost 10% higher in these essential magnet feeds than is Mountain Pass MP materials in California. Uh, in terms of our flow sheet, this is as standard as it gets in the rare earth element world, but I would draw your attention to the magnetic separation where at that point we produce two separate concentrates, a high grade rare earth element concentrate and for free, a fluorospar concentrate. Now, fluorospar, you may or may not know, is also one of the critical strategic commodities on planet Earth right now. And our fluorospar byproduct, actually our fluorospar resource is we believe the second largest fluorospar resource on planet Earth. And five years ago, we were approached by Glencore Four years ago, they encouraged us to sign a binding MOU with us. And at this moment, we are in the final stages of producing a representative sample of acid grade fluorospar for delivery to Glencore. In terms of the rare earth element concentrate samples that have been requested, this is a partial list. Several companies are under NDA with us, but you can see some of the international players, Solvay, the world's biggest rare earth element company that's not Chinese, and then the ones from the United States. In terms of one of these, I would like to give a shout out to Energy Fuels because of their speed in transitioning uh, their white, white mills, white mason mill facility in Utah over to be a processor and producer of rare earth element concentrates. Commerce Resources is prioritizing the delivery of a sample of the ashram rare earth element concentrate to energy fuels. This is a list of some of the capital that has been announced to be deployed by international governments. I'd like to draw your attention to the two companies at the bottom who have already received significant capital because these are two of the companies that have requested a sample from Commerce Resources. In both of these cases, they were given capital to build out their manufacturing facility, but with essentially the caveat that they be processing non-Chinese feed. And so at the end of the day, they can have a facility up and running, but where are they getting feed from? They've made a sample request to Commerce. I'd also like to give a shout out to Jordan Roy Burns, so I, I, who I'm, whom I'm sure many of you in the gold world know and probably respect because he does an extremely deep dive when he does his due diligence. And he has done this on the rare earth element sector and on commerce resources. I have not read his report on commerce resources, but I encourage you to seek uh, that report and uh, to subscribe to his uh, newsletter. In terms of one of the charts that Jordan has been following, this would be the Van Eck Rare Earth Element ETF. And if you take a look at this chart, it has just broken out. Below that, you can see the chart for Commerce Resources. Not that dissimilar, excepting for the fact that we haven't broke out yet. Does someone say buy low, sell high? There you go. So in summary, the Ashram Rare Earth Element and Fluorospar deposit is the most standard type of deposit, a monocyte dominant carbonatite. It has a huge resource. It's in a great jurisdiction. We can produce high grade mineral concentrates. We released positive economics in 2012 without the addition of our Fluorospar byproduct. And we do have a financing underway. I thank you very much for your time and attention today. And I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.